So thank you very much for having me here. And uh, I've heard a bit of Serbian today that I didn't understand anything of. So I thought I will do the rest of this in Swedish. Um, the, the slides are in English, so you will probably follow regardless. So uh, jag håller på med DNS i massvis med år under större delen av min yrkeskarriär, mer än 25 år. Jag började med att hålla kurser i DNS någon gång i början på 90-talet och det håller jag fortfarande på med även på marknaden lite sämre. Uh, was that understandable to anyone? Good. So, wow. So, uh, I basically do DNS stuff. Uh, I do DNS stuff on a rather large scale because we run one of the internet root name servers. We serve lots of TLDs including .rs and we provide all sorts of DNS services around the world, mostly any cost. Um, that's to some extent my fault because what actually me making the, the argument to the NetNode board that we should do this for other things than just the root and, and that's, that's what we do. Um, but once upon a time, uh, it used to be the case that this Anycost thing was sort of exotic and new. Uh, I, I vividly remember lots of meetings that we had among the root server operators when we started to discuss whether to actually Anycost the, oops, sorry, I'm sort of uh, wobbling here, uh, whether to, to Anycost or not. At the time, this was really scary in the sense that we were worried about causing internet instability. We were worried about um, sort of throwing the baby out with the bathwater by creating a larger problem by going the Anycost route than the perceived risk of DDoS attacks that we were trying to solve. But that's a long time ago and now Anycost is really standard and everyone is doing it. However, there are other things that are also changing with DNS. Uh, it's not only about uh, any cost. It's about new software choices. It's about uh, new demands from the market where you need to be able to deploy zones really, really rapidly. It's no longer the case that deploying a new zone is a major undertaking and it doesn't matter if it takes a day. Now a new zone should be deployed in, in seconds, preferably around the world. Um, we also see changes to the actual DNS data. It used to be the case that in DNS you have mostly static information like the IP address for this particular server or whatever, the MX record for someone's mail domain. Now we have highly dynamic information in DNS which changes all the time. So DNS itself is changing rather rapidly from a rather static service to something else. Oops. Um, Part of all these changes is, of course, the, the DDoS stuff. Uh, at one point, uh, it's easy to argue that the reason that we have any cost today is because the perceived threat of DDoS attacks. When I say perceived, I will not say that there are no DDoS attacks because obviously there are lots of DDoS attacks. But I will say that uh, there is a, there's a risk of overstating the DDoS case because not every zone on the internet will be DDoSed all the time. Yes, many zones receive DDoS attacks and in some cases name servers are actually involved in creating the attacks, but it's not the case that every DNS piece of information is always at, at risk. Um, however, uh, if we for the moment uh, ignore the DDoS part and, and look at the, the system complexity of DNS that comes from any cost and comes from this change into more dynamic data into more dynamic configurations and stuff, uh, we still have a rather serious problem here. And, and the problem is that we have an infrastructure called DNS that is becoming more and more complex and it's costing more and more money to run and the revenue isn't really sufficient to match this increasing cost of operation. And I think that is going to cause some serious changes to this industry. Um, so skipping this because we already spoke about DDoS. Um, I, I, I believe that what we are about to see when we're talking about, let's call it any cost or switching to, to DNS as a service, is that it would be more, in the future, it will be more about economic drivers rather than the perceived DDoS threat. The DDoS threat is there, but it's not the only thing, and perhaps the economic drivers are actually more important. Um, 
So as we move from, let's call it the early days of DNS, where DNS was something where you, you put up bind on your own server and your friend put up bind on his server and you slave his zone and, you, and he slaves your zone and you're, you both hack away on your namedy.conf files, which some of us ha have actually done for a very, very long time. Those days are just over. That's not how you do this anymore. What you do today is that you, you provision DNS through an API and you buy DNS as a service from some sort of professional DNS service provider. And we get more and more APIs. We have provisioning APIs and we have stats APIs and we have various management APIs to, to manage all this stuff around the world. And this completely changes the landscape of DNS from a technical point of view. It's no longer so much about knowing how to configure a name server. It's more about API integration, etc. Um, another thing that is changing, slowly but surely, I, I wish it was changing more, more quickly, is that more and more organizations are beginning to realize that this DNS thing is actually rather important. And if it's rather important, it shouldn't just be good enough, it should be kept under contract. There should be an SLA, there should be some sort of guarantees associated with the service provided rather than just go for what you get for free by, by exchanging services with a friend. Um, I will not say that this is something that is true for most of the zones on the planet. I mean, we have many, many hundreds of millions of zones, and most of those zones are, are just me, my dog, and, and, and my cat, and they are rather un unimportant. But then we have all the other important zones. We have the TLDs, we have the... The, the media stuff, we have all the government agencies, etc., etc. All these important zones are slowly but surely moving in a direction where they actually understand the need for a contract and the need for an SLA. So how do we do this when there isn't enough revenue in the space to, to actually uh, cover the costs? Well, you outsource some stuff. Thankfully, it's rather cheap to buy DNS service these days. Assuming you, you, you adjust your, your own configuration stuff to, to talk to the API of the service provider. Um, the problem here is that many of the hosting providers or the registrars, etc., they, they have this pile of zones that they are operating. And it could be a small pile of a thousand zones, or it could be a rather large pile of a million zones, but still, it's just a pile of customer zones and they don't really get any revenue from this. It's, it's a loss business. It's costing them money to run servers and they want to outsource it. But they don't know who is the premium customer in this pile of zones. There are probably a few zones in there that would actually be prepared to pay for premium service and you should outsource them and, and get, get them any costed and everything is fine and you should keep all the, the others that are not prepared to pay running on your, your old Linux service until they, they die. But you cannot invest the time in doing this customer segmentation because there isn't enough money in it. So what do you do? Well, the cost of running your own infrastructure isn't going down. I mean, the, the cost of an actual server is already basically zero, but the cost of your time is not zero. And you always need to invest time. You need to upgrade to new versions of Bind, and you need to change the configuration and all that stuff. So that cost remains, but the cost of buying the service is going down because we have price erosion in the market, and it's, beca it's becoming really, really cheap to just purchase DNS service for a zone or purchase DNS service for a very large number of zones. So given that the price erosion goes far enough, you don't have to segment your customers. What you do is you just throw the entire pile of, of customer zones in there because that's actually cheaper than trying to figure out which zone is of which type. Is this a premium customer that would like to pay or is this someone who is always going for the cheapest alternative? And what happens when, when this happens? When the registrars and the hosting providers and the, the guys with a pile of customer zones just throw the entire shebang into various DNS service providers infrastructure, 
we reach a point where there will probably be some sort of waterfall effect. At first, there are just a few doing it, and then a few more, and suddenly everyone is doing it, and, and everything basically changes. So wh when you look at stuff like market penetration, th that's really interesting, and it has nothing to do with DNS. I mean, we, we have basically the same discussion about V6 just before lunch. When do you reach that penetration threshold where the rest just happens automatically? Because suddenly the gravity changes. Right now the gravity is still V4 and you have to push for stuff to go to the V6 camp. At some point the center of gravity will move over into the V6 camp and then it will just happen automatically. And there are so many examples of this. Phones, in the beginning, why would you get a phone? There's no point in having a phone. You cannot call anyone because you're the only one with a phone. Suddenly that changes and everyone has a phone. Email, same thing. Cars, credit cards, internet access, etc. When you reach the, the market penetration threshold, suddenly the market dynamics changes and everything just follows. And I think that in the DNS space, this is obviously just a question of, of price, and we are getting rather close to the point where this will just happen. So what, what would be the consequence of that? Well, when, when any cost becomes necessary in the sense that it doesn't make sense to run your own, well, why do I say any cost? I say any cost because there's really no business case for unicost. When the price point is, is down here for an any cost service, why just buy unicost? Um, the market will become more professional, that's good. Uh, the quality will increase, that's fine. General DDoS resilience and robustness will increase, that's fine. And we will see fewer outages, all good. Do we have any disadvantages? Well, there are disadvantages. Um, smaller providers will be edged out. There, there's a, a very real risk of um, increased page sharing when a very large number of internet DNS infrastructure is located in the same small number of service providers infrastructure. Um, as a service provider, we will have a massive problem with moving all the data for all these rather low traffic mom pop and the dog zones to the edges of the internet where they will basically get no queries. But because any cost is the service you provide and you just ship all the data to everywhere, etc., and it will be very hard to recover that cost. Um, so it could be that this turns out badly with, with, with an industry that just consolidates in, into a few really, really massive players that provide a service at a really cutthroat price level. And in the end, the only way to make that work financially will be by having a high degree of hate sharing and really not a good system design for the internet. And, th and that's a scary perspective that I don't like to see, but it's clearly a risk that we have. Do we have any other problems? Well, we have a long tradition in DNS of, of open source, and there are many competing implementations. We have Bind, and we have NSD, and we have Unbound, and not DNS, and all sorts of other alternatives, and also commercial ones like Microsoft DNS, etc. And, and that's fine. But what happens when we, we migrate away from actually running our own servers? I mean, my, my underlying thesis here is that in two years or in five years, basically no one in this room will run their own name service. We will, all, we will all just buy service from someone and it will not cost very much. Um, what will happen is that when we buy a service instead of running our own name servers or using our friend's name servers or something, is that we will move towards closed source. If you look at the large service providers, they are running their own implementations. Why are they running their own implementations? Well, they are because one of the things that they use to distinguish themselves from the competition is by adding their own proprietary extensions. Um, in, in our case, 
uh, us being one of the smaller providers, we are still running open source name server implementations in, in the back end, but we have all sorts of stuff on, on top of that. But this is also actually limiting us what we can do compared to one, what some of the competition does. And most of the competition has already switched to their own closed source implementations. So I, I think a lot of the tradition of, of open source here will actually disappear. So if we look at this from the point of view of the company that has this pile of, of customer zones, um, what is the problem really? Well, the problem has always existed. It's just that the problem is changing. And it will change from being a question of choice of software platform, constant upgrades because of new DNS vulnerabilities that are discovered in various platforms. Uh, some of us have upgraded bind more times than we can remember. Um, and all sorts of, of configuration and systems management around our DNS infrastructure. And instead it will be about APIs. It will be about whether the features I need will be provided by the API from vendor X or whether I need to go with vendor Z at a, at a different price point. It will to a very large extent be the case that if I make the investment of moving my portfolio of customer zones, like half a million zones or something, over into that vendor, that service provider, the cost of the API integration will be higher than the revenue I get from this. And that means that I will definitely not want to move to a different provider that has a different API because I would never be able to recover that cost. And that runs us, that causes the risk of a huge lock-in effect where people go from running their own infrastructure to using a service provider of some sort and then they just don't want to move again because it costs too much. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and that, that means that my, my summary of this is that, and this is a slide I used last year, um, with, with further DNS evolution, professional service, and DNS consulting. And I just updated that to, to say that as we move in the direction of DNS any cost for basically everything, um, the traditional division between DNS service and, and routing is becoming more and more mixed up because any cost is basically moving the DNS decision, decision down into the right, routing layer. Uh, that doesn't really matter to customers because that's not their problem. They're just buying a service and they're not paying very much, but it's certainly a problem for the service provider who has to manage this increasingly complex infrastructure. Um, all of us, I think, will stop running our own name servers. To, to me, this is sort of sad because this is what I've done for more than 25 years and I've taught for years and years and years uh, how people should set up their own name servers and how to configure namely.conf and what to do with Unbound and all that stuff. I think that's going away, actually. I think that market is just going to die. And that, that's, that's okay, but I think we're losing something. Um, it will become a more professional service, fewer providers, closed source, and DNS consulting will change in a massive way. Obviously, we, we provide these services not only to TLDs, we do it also on the enterprise side, etc. But that's not the point of the talk. The point of the talk is that I think that this, this waterfall effect, when the center of gravity moves, has taken a very, very long time in the V6 space, and we're just getting close to it. I think in the DNS case, we started much later, but I think the waterfall point where this just changes is perhaps much closer. Questions? No questions? I have questions. Okay. Uh, hello, Jan here from Internet Society. Thank you for this really nice presentation. What, what I'm wondering is, you mentioned the DNS extensions for differentiation between the providers. Can you 
Can you give us an example? Because I, uh, you yeah. know, I'm also running DNS for, for 20 years, and I cannot imagine what kind of extensions you would put in the protocol. So, uh, example number one, uh, geolocation stuff. You, you want to have a different A or quad A returned uh, depending on where the query is coming from. Um, example number two, uh, you want to have some sort of CDN integration where uh, queries for your, your web server or w whatever service you're providing is not actually going to your server, it's rather going to the CDN front end dynamically. And that by itself will require magic CDN things to happen behind the curtain, uh, etc. So, so if, if you look at, at what these dynamic services are, it has a lot to do with companies focusing on core business and outsourcing non-core stuff. I mean, uh, part of this is actually outsourcing lots of your, your web server stuff to CDNs, etc., and, and having CDN magic happen to, to cater to that. And it's not necessarily bad. I, I think it's fine, but you have to realize the consequences of this is that the zone is not as static as it used to be. More questions? Okay, so uh, ju just like Christian, I will end on, on with a personal note on, on IPv6. 